We all love The Last Jedi. Okay, now I don't do reviews very often, um, and by the statement I just uh, released, you're probably thinking I don't get out very often, or at least look at the internet very often. Uh, this is my first review, and what a film to start with, The Last Jedi. I believe it's been a little bit divisive. So I'm gonna let you into a secret. I like The Last Jedi, and this video is uh, mostly focused on what I liked, and in some cases loved, about the film. There's a, f a few problems that I'll also uh, touch upon as well, but really, they ain't major, not in my book. Now, it's cool to love the film, it's cool to like the film, it's cool to not like the film, it's cool to hate the film. As long as you're chill uh, with your opinions towards others, you know, it can be a discussion, but I haven't seen a lot of shouting down, uh, a lot of uh, anger directed towards people. People who like the film, towards people who don't like the film, and vice versa. There's a video clip of me um, out on the internet, on my channel, a little plug. Uh, I'll put a little card thing up there, wherever it goes, always up there, I don't know. Anyway, I'll put a card in. Um, there's a video clip of me thanking Ryan Johnson, little name drop there, uh, for the film. And I got attacked for that. Normally when I get attacked, it's for my hair, not my manners. I like the film. I met the director. Of course I'm going to thank him. If someone makes me a meal and I meet the chef afterwards, I'm going to thank that chef. Even if I didn't like the meal, you know, I'm probably going to thank the chef anyway. And, and lie, essentially. But I wasn't lying to Ryan Johnson because I did enjoy the film. So I said thank you and my mum will be very proud. But yeah, I was lucky enough to go to one of the first viewings, if not the first viewing in uh, Europe, a press screening. Um, it was introduced by Ryan Johnson on stage with BB-8. It was an incredible um, atmosphere. Normally when you go to these press screenings, it's dry. There's an air of business, you know, to proceedings. People have got their notebooks out or writing notes on their phones, which you couldn't do in this screening because your phones were put into like a sealable uh, envelope. But it was completely different to the normal vibe at a press screening. It was, um, there was an atmosphere. There was uh, laughter throughout, there was whooping, there was cheering, um, there was applause at the end. You could say a standing ovation, but then 90% of those standing and clapping were actually sort of leaving and clapping. Uh, so I don't think that counts. And I should say that I've not been paid to say that I like The Last Jedi. No. I'm telling you what I thought of The Last Jedi, and I like The Last Jedi. I would get more views if I hated on The Last Jedi. You know, YouTube Yoda, I believe, says that uh, hate leads to hits. I like The Last Jedi. I'm going to tell you why. So I liked it, but I don't know how much I liked it. I came out feeling uh, drained mentally and, and physically. Um, a bit sexually as well, actually. Those, those milky nipples. Um, yeah, I came out thinking about it. It was going over and over in my head for, for days. It was like when you watch an episode of Black Mirror, you're still just digesting it and figuring uh, things out, what that meant, what it means. And I just knew I was going to have to have a second viewing because I was not in a position to be able to give it a, a grade or to, to rank it amongst the other Star Wars films. So a second viewing uh, happened. Christmas Eve, took my 10 year old nephew to go and see it up in my hometown. I, I left London for Christmas and um, I didn't like it. But to be honest, I was horrendously hungover, so I didn't like life in general uh, that day. So I don't think it counts. And I'd lectured my little nephew um, on how long the film uh, is going to be. Two and a half hours, you're going to go to the toilet, you're going to get it all out lad, and then you're not going to move during the film. We're not going to have any of that. He, uh, he obeyed my orders, he got it all out, uh, we sat down and he didn't leave the screen once during the film. Meanwhile, his old uncle left three times, so it wasn't, uh, I probably saw the toilet more than I saw uh, the film, uh, to be honest. So, uh, third viewing it is then. But let's rewind back to my first uh, viewing. During that first viewing, um, I was bloody loving it. I went in spoiler free. Uh, I was 
shocked by the twists, by the turns. I enjoyed most of the jokes. I tolerated Canto Bite. Uh, I felt all of the feels. And I genuinely felt like anything could happen in this film. You know, all bets were off. From the moment Luke briefly observed the lightsaber before tossing it over his shoulder. I didn't mind Snoke getting sliced without a backstory. I didn't mind Ray not having a celebrity parents. I mean, maybe because I didn't engage much with the speculation or the fan theories over the two years between The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, maybe therefore it impacted on me less, maybe it didn't matter so much to me as it might have to, to those who'd really invested in all of that. But I really didn't mind, and I think it's important that Rey hasn't got celebrity parents, uh, a Solo or a Skywalker. I, I really think that is. Maybe she still is, you know, maybe Kylo was um, just trying to make her really angry to, to join him on the dark side. But I think for Star Wars to move on, um, like it's going to have to eventually, uh, or eventually it's happening now by, by the looks of it. I mean, people don't like change. People are scared of change. Change is scary. Sometimes change is smelly. Have you ever changed a diaper? A few more things that I uh, was fine with that I know were controversial uh, with some. I've written some notes here. Milky nipples, touched on them earlier, so to speak. Uh, milky nipples, yeah, they're not making or breaking a Star Wars film for me. Those nipples were there to be milked. Uh, sure, it wasn't sexy, but I like the idea that maybe he was trying to be, you know, repulsive to put uh, Ray off, loitering around him. Uh, I mean, I also envy him if that's the case. You know, having to act overly gross to put a girl off. I do it without realising, apparently. I like the dynamic uh, between him and Ray. I enjoyed that. It was, it was funny at times. Uh, I would have liked to have seen more training, maybe. Um, but I suppose it's a bit like, it's what you don't see. You know, what we didn't see with Luke on Dagobah, with Yoda. Um, what didn't we see here? We're never going to see it all, of course. But we, I don't think we saw the three lessons that he promised. Did we see two lessons? Let me know if there were three lessons. But I only remember two lessons. I could have been in the toilet uh, for lesson three. Um, lesson one for me is uh, not to get uh, shit-faced the night before uh, a really important film screening. Anyway, Luke's not really gone. He's going to force Ghost his way back. He literally told us to be back see around kid or similar and if yoda can summon lightning bolts in ghost form then there could be some great luke moments to come the moment with r2 on the falcon is just beautiful uh i got really emotional um during that moment um yeah you know that's how it all began really uh, and when he played that message when you know luke saw that message all those years ago and decided to go off on this this great adventure uh, to see that message again uh, with future uh, grumpy old Luke was just, and he, what did he say, that's a cheap trick. It was, that, that was a beautiful moment. Loved Yoda popping up. Um, at first he looked a little bit deformed. At first I was, I was worried about him, what the after force life was, was, was doing to him. But I don't know if the lighting was off or something, but a few shots later as we got into it, he looked amazing. He looked like... It's Puppet Yoda, classic Puppet Yoda, Empire Strikes Back, uh, Return of the Jedi, you know, it was the Yoda that I, I want to see. Uh, I love that with the music and, and his wise words and interacting with, with Luke. It must have been, uh, I'd love to speak to Frank Oz and uh, Mark Hamill to find out what it was like working together again um, all those years later. And one of the big secrets of the film. Really, although I have to say I saw a picture of Frank Oz at the uh, US premiere, so I kind of had an inkling. Porg's fine, no issue. Pro Porg. Some other moments at the Chewie hug, Chewie and Leia hugging. Uh, I know that was a bit of a, that was a weird one in The Force Awakens where Chewie snubbed Leia when they landed back at the base, you know, and after what had happened with Han, that was a really strange thing that uh, Chewie and Leia would not have any kind of interaction. They, they basically walked past each other and Leia and Rey hugged it out. Uh, so it was a really strange uh, snubbing. I mean, only 3PO gets snubbed. Broom Boy, uh, nice touch for what's to come uh, and to see Luke's influence, you know, on the galaxy, his, his legacy in place, inspiring a new generation. I like that, I get it. I found it a bit 
weird as the closing scene because it just seemed like the natural moment for the classic kind of sign out was that group shot on board of the uh, Millennium Falcon so I found it was a bit like a, in fact I'm not suggesting I've invented uh, this uh, term but I think um, someone's called it the post credits before the credits it was like a post credit scene before the credits uh, played out and that makes sense to me that's what it felt like Laura Dern, Hodo, the second viewing it just seemed to me like it should have been Leia. I just think it would have been a really, you know, uh, emotional send-off for that character, which presumably they were going to kill off at some point anyway, because I've heard that The Force Awakens, we saw it was Han's film, this, Luke's film, whether it was your Luke or not, it was Luke's film, and the next uh, one, episode nine, was supposed to be Princess Leia's film, so obviously they were never going to kill off Luke and Leia in in eight, uh, they would they could never have uh, done that. But I think maybe the character that should have gone in that film was Leia in that moment. That would have been so impactful, so emotional. And it was still a stunning scene, and not a technical fault. Leia performing Mary Poppins in space. Would we have learned more about her force powers in Episode Nine? Perhaps we would have seen flashbacks. Sticking with the Mary Poppins theme, maybe she was babysitting the younglings. Canto bite scenes sponsored by Petta. Um, I, I, second time round, um, didn't enjoy Canto bite or didn't tolerate it as much as I did first time. Uh, I like the messages in there. Um, <laughs> it kind of makes me laugh that they just made such a mess out of their mission, but freed a few animals. I like animals, uh, even fictional r r space horses or whatever they were. Uh, they're fine. Uh, I'm, I'm glad they got their freedom. It's a little bit too our world uh, for my liking, but it's not a problem. If I had to shave uh, any chunk of the film off, it would be would be that. But still, don't hate it. Overall, I'm a fan, hands down. I can't rank it yet. I can't grade it. Uh, but I know I liked it, I just don't know how much I liked it. I'm probably hovering around 7.58 out of 10, but again, a second viewing, that could go up, that could go down, uh, third viewing. Overall, it was fun, and that's really what I want from a Star Wars film. It was weird, surprising, occasionally messy, emotional, not the Star Wars film I expected, but I'm all for it. It was a little bit kind of F you to JJ at times, you know, poo-pooing his big setups, but then surely he was involved in some way in terms of being executive producer, this story had to be signed off. It's easy to say it's just a film, and I know as fans it's so hard not to overthink parts that, that bug you. And I really do feel for anyone that doesn't like it. And I wish it was the Star Wars film that everybody wanted, but then that's probably never gonna happen. So what did you think of the film? Let me know in the comments. Has it got better or worse for you the more times you've seen it? Where would you rank it overall? And if you're new to the channel, please uh, have a little think about maybe subscribing, take a look around. I do a lot of Star Wars content. Uh, content that you won't find anywhere else. I like to think it's um, pretty uh, unique. Uh, this not being a very good example of what I do on this channel, but I'd love you to check it all out um, Please uh, like this video even if you didn't like the film uh, It does help me if you can like this video it helps with all YouTube algorithms and uh, All that kind of stuff and of course uh, subscribe to the channel if it takes your fancy and Yeah, I guess I'm off to my third viewing uh, hangover free